everybody. I'm Grant with the PlayersAid.com. Today I'm going to do, I'm actually going to video record a playthrough of a solitaire uh, scenario for Space Empires 4X from GMT Games. If you don't know, Space Empires is a 4X game. Um, and if you don't know what a 4X game is, typically it's a game. It doesn't have to be set in space. Typically they are. But your the 4Xs come from Explore, Expand, Exploit, and Exterminate. You're going to explore the systems in and around your home planet or home base if it's a non sci-fi based game. You're also going to then expand your uh, influence into those areas, building colonies, setting up infrastructure like shipyards or pipelines, etc. You're then going to exploit those new planets for their resources. They're going to provide you a certain amount of resource points uh, that you're going to uh, use to then develop technologies, to buy uh, increased uh, war units like carriers, destroyers, cruisers, scouts, etc., so that you can go out and do the, fir the final element or the final X, which is to exterminate your enemy. In the solo variant, the difference, the main difference is you're still going to start with your home system. So here I'm, there's my home system. You actually start the game. Uh, with a fully developed home planet, which is going to produce 20 CPs every round. You get one miner. Miners are used to go out and collect asteroids to then return to your base, drop them on colonies uh, so that you can process them for extra CPs. Very valuable. You're going to start with three scouts. I'm going to go ahead and pull one of these scouts up. The scout is a military vehicle it does have an attack rating and a small hull size of one. It always attacks last. That's not what its primary function is. Its primary function is to go out and explore. Explore spaces around you uh, so that you can identify what's there. I've also got four shipyards. Shipyards are interesting. They do have an attack value for when someone comes into the system where you have shipyards. They have a small hull size, so they're going to blow up uh, with one hit, but you're going to use them to build different ships. You can never build more units based on their hull size than you have, have shipyards. Most of your ships in the early game are going to have a one hull size, like the Scout. A colony ship or a miner that I kind of already talked about, the miner, they don't count um, but you can only build uh, one of those in that system. Not one of them, but you can build those as part of your four building. Colony ships uh, are obviously used. You're going to send them out. They're going to crash land into planets that do not need to be terraformed first. And then they're going to create, start the process of creating a colony. The interesting thing, the thematic thing about the colony ship is that when it crash lands on a planet, the ship itself actually is broken down over time and is used to develop uh, your colony. So you're, you're going to lose that colony ship every time that it goes out. So you got to keep that in mind. As you continue to explore and you find new planets, you got to buy colony ships in order to get out there. So those are the units that you start with in your home, home system. In a traditional game, you're going to play against two or uh, two or three opponents, and they're also going to have their home systems based on the map. You can actually see these colored lines. That's green, yellow. There's a red here that you can't see and a blue. If you are playing a four-player game, green's going to set up in this quadrant. Yellow will set up in this quadrant. Red and blue on the other side of the map. You're going to place your home system markers, which are colored. There are, I think, 25 of those. And on the back sides of those, they all have the same type of things on them, the same number of discoverable planets where you can colonize. You're also going to find at least a black hole. You're going to find a couple of asteroid belts and a couple of nebula, which don't do you any good. They can be used for your offensive or defensive 
benefit if you're attacking or defending in there, which is kind of cool. You're also going to find clumps of uh, minerals that you can capture with your miners and haul back. You're also going to find, I think in your initial 25, there's one barren planet that you cannot colonize, but you can develop a technology called terraforming, and then you can start colonizing those planets. So that's the way a normal game works. In this game, you're setting up in a certain area, and I've actually chosen the small solitaire map. This game should take for a solitaire game less than two hours. If you know what you're doing, a turn can take three to five minutes. Battles are going to take a little longer depending on how you roll. And you're only going to fight doomsday machines. You're not going to fight other types of vehicles, but you're only going to fight these doomsday machines that are absolutely brutal, by the way. And if you are not prepared for them, they will run you over and destroy all your planets and ultimately destroy your home, home planet as well. But in the solitaire variant, you are going to fight three, and I'll show you one of these doomsday machines. You're going to fight three of these doomsday machines. You can see the picture there. It's just a huge beastly ship. You can see this one has a one on it. This is the first of three doomsday machines. I have placed them off to the side of the map. They are actually going to randomly appear outside deep space in predetermined areas. Here's one where it could uh, could appear. Here's another one where it could appear. I'll show you this one. Here's another one. Uh, I think here and here and then over here. And you're going to you're going to determine that by rolling dice, rolling a 10 sider and consulting a table and it's going to tell you, "Oh, Doomsday Machine 1 appears here." And then you're going to have to battle that as it is is going to continually move towards your colonies. So this is the small solitaire map. I've got it all set up. Once again, there are 25 home sector chits that you're going to place there that need to be explored in order to turn over so you know what is there. The way you explore those are with your scouts. I have three scouts, so I'm going to move those out. All vehicles move one space, no more than one space. Shipyards cannot ever move. To get new shipyards, you have to continually build them, either at your home colony or a colony uh, that has produced income, I think is the, the way that they, uh, they state them. But your miners can move, your colony ships, and your scouts can move initially, but they can only move one space. So what you're going to do is you are going to do movement over a three-turn phase which is considered one economic phase. So three turns are included in each, each of those economic phases. At the beginning, or I'm sorry, at the, I think it's at the end of the seventh, and, the, and the, this table I wanna show you. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this table around. We're looking here on this table for the doomsday machines. You're going to see that you're going to, I'm doing the easy scenario. I've already played the easy scenario and I won. I'm not going to say that I won it easily, but I was prepared enough to be able to destroy all three of the doomsday machines. The last one, man, it was really hard. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that later. Um, but you can see here under the easy column, your the doomsday machine is first going to appear in economic phase round seven. And it says that in the rule book, you always take your actions before it. So I, I have adjudicated that to mean at the end of round seven. Correct me if I'm wrong, anyone that knows the rules. That's the one problem I had. There were just a couple ambiguous parts about the rules. Uh, here it's going to, you're only going to get, uh, yeah, so easy round seven is when that's going to appear. And then the second, you're going to go, uh, sorry, Th then, I'm sorry, the, the thing I forgot here is it says seven slash one. So in the first DM, I'm gonna have it appear in round seven. Then I'm gonna turn over to the table, the doomsday machine strength table. And it's going to be, the first one's gonna be a strength one. It's gonna have an attack power of seven. It's gonna attack in priority D which A, B, and C units will fire before it. 
It has a defense strength of one, a hull size of six, which means it can take six hits, and it will have three attacks. That one's not that bad. That one's very, very, I'm not going to say easily handled. You still have to roll well and be prepared, but you can fight that one off with minimal losses. So then let's go back to that table. So you can see that in the second DM is going to come in at the end of economic phase nine, and it's going to be a three power. So I wanted to show you there, the difference between a three and a one is significant. So the attack strength is going to increase from a seven to an eight. Defense is going to increase by one from a one to a two. Hull size increases by one to from a six to a seven, and it will add one attack. It also will increase in fire priority C, so your D units now will not fire uh, before it. It also comes with a tactics rating of a two, so it's going to shoot before your C units unless you have a tactics rating of a three. So then back to that table, you're then at the third DM, economic phase 11, and that is going to have a five power, and man, it increases significantly. Look there at the number five, you can see it goes to a B9, two defense strength, eight hull size, and five attacks. That thing is a beast, and that one is very, very hard to kill. By that point, if you don't have battleships, that are fully maxed out with attack and defense. And if you aren't able to build up a decent sized number of ships, say three to five, and a couple flotillas to go out and attack it, you're gonna be in trouble. So the good thing about this game though, is it gives you time to prepare. It gives you time to prepare your economy so that you can go out and survive these doomsday machines. The other thing about the doomsday machines, they are going to approach the, when they arrive, they are going to approach your nearest colony. And if there's a tie, they're going to choose the nearest colony that gets them closest to your central colony or right here in the middle. So that's a very key point. They're also, when they attack, it says their attack priority is to minimize anything that they are weak against. And you're going to roll on a table and it's going to tell you it's weak against certain elements. And that's random, by the way. Kind of a neat aspect, but you really can't plan for that. So it's going to destroy. If it's weak against fighters, it's going to, it's going to try to destroy your carriers and your fighters first. Because those are going to get advantages. If it somehow is weak against a large number of ships, it's going to choose the first ship that it can destroy so that it gets you under the threshold to not give you an advantage when you attack it. Those kind of things. More often than not, it's going to attack your best units and the units that it has the best chance of uh, hitting. So if you have two groups of, say, let's say a battleship, you have one group of battleships that are defense two and another group that is defense three, it's going to attack the defense two group because it, it can destroy those easier than it, than it can the others. So that's its attack priority. And when we get into the doomsday machines here in about an hour, you're really gonna see that they will kick the crap out of you if you are not prepared. And sometimes, frankly, even if you're prepared, it is really the luck of the die. I think the other day when I was playing, it rolled multiple twos and threes, which in this game, you're trying to roll under a certain number to hit. And it was rolling all the time. And I could, I rolled nines and tens the entire time on a 10-sider and I was missing. So it can happen. You have to be prepared for it. So enough of that. Once again, I've given you an introductory kind of look at the game itself. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go through one round and simulate a round, and then I'm going to stop this video. I will edit it, put up some graphics, and I will try to get it posted uh, for you in the next couple of days. I will follow that then with a playthrough, probably three to four rounds at a time, uh, and then I will post those videos as a part one, part two, part three, four, five, et cetera. It'll probably get up to about part five, and you can watch those through to conclude the game. So with that, let's go ahead and play Space Empire Solitaire Scenario. So the first phase, you do not collect money yet. You have to go out and do something. So over here on the left, there is a turn track. I'm not going to turn it and show it to you because it's, it's pretty simple. We are in turn one. So in turn one, what I want to do is I want to explore first. You can never move another ship 
into an area where there's an unexplored token, that ship will have to stop and it cannot move, move any further that round. So you're going to have to explore the, the chits around you looking for minerals, looking for planets that you can then start to colonize. You want to build your economy as quickly as you possibly can. So let's go ahead and let's do this simply. I will move my first scout there to the right. I'll move this scout to the left and I will move this scout here. Now the difference, in, the one thing that I really like about this game in the sequence of play is all units must be moved now. So I moved my scout ships. Now if I'm done moving, I'm gonna do my explore phase. Let's say I found a mineral that I flipped over. You notice I didn't move my miner. So when I find that mineral, I cannot move my miner after I find that mineral to get out there. All movement happens before exploration. So sometimes you'll want to move in anticipation of what's going to happen, but you gotta be careful because if you hit a black hole, your, your ships have a chance of being destroyed and you don't wanna lose your miner because that, that's something you're gonna have to replace and waste dollars to do that. So I have moved. We're gonna now go ahead and explore. So we're simply going to turn over these counters. So you may not be able to see that. The first one I turned over was a mineral five. So yay, I found a mineral. My second one is the Pleiades planet and that is a colonizable planet. I can actually start a colony ship there and develop a colony that's gonna generate income. And I got really lucky. My first three pulls were all positive. So there I found, I found a mineral. So that's the end of the first round. I've done everything that I can do. I can't move my ships. So we're now going to move to round two in the first economic phase. So now we go back to exploring. I'm going to go ahead and explore. I'm actually going to explore here. I'm going to explore here. And I'm going to explore here. One other thing you might notice that there are these white, these are deep space counters. They are full of danger and they're full of great reward. They have minerals that will provide you with 10 uh, CPs. Those are double what you're getting from these smaller ones. The other good things they'll have are shipwrecks which have you gain a technology for free, which is really cool, but there's a lot of dangers. There's a token called danger, your, your ship just gets destroyed. There's also one called lost in space. Uh, there's, an, uh, there's asteroid fields, nebula, barren planets, but more bad, I feel, than good. So you really wanna focus on your green home system chits first so that you can get things developing. So once again, I move my scouts for the second turn. I'm now going to move my miner and I'm going to collect that mineral. So moving there and attaching myself to it is one turn. So it's done. I'm now going to take a colony ship. I'm going to move onto the Pleiades planet. And in essence, now I have crashed that colony ship there and I'm going to start the process of developing that colony. It will take a few rounds for it to develop, but it will return uh, money to me so that I can uh, increase my economy. So those are all the ships. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna move, it, move a colony ship here because I'm, I'm taking a chance that there's at least one planet out that way. The other one I'm gonna go ahead and sit because I don't know if I'm gonna find any other planets on the right. Uh, or on the left. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just, just chill out. So now we go ahead and reveal these home space tokens. This is an asteroid token. Asteroids are not bad for you. You cannot move through an asteroid field with two movement points. You have to move into it and stop. You also cannot have two movement points move up adjacent to and then enter an asteroid field. It You have to be adjacent to it to move through it. So that's going to be kind of a hindrance. And unfortunately, that prohibition does not count for the uh, doomsday machines. So here I'm going to turn this one over. Okay, this is a barren planet. I'll, I'll show you that one. 
So this is a barren, barren planet, the planet Hoth. That planet cannot be colonized until or unless I buy the terraforming technology. I'll have to make a decision uh, depending on where my other planets are located. Uh, here's my third ship and it also found a mineral. So that's another interesting element of the game. You know, I found a couple minerals. I may want to buy another mining ship so that I can get out and collect those quickly. But you got to remember, you got to pay for those ships. A miner is going to cost you five. So you have to really, in your mind, kind of do an efficiency analysis and decide, is it worth buying another miner or not? More often than not, I go ahead and buy another one. Uh, but this game, I may, I may not. We'll see how that goes. So that's all the movement for the second turn in the first economic phase. We'll now go to round, or I'm sorry, turn three, and the final turn in this economic phase. So this miner is going to move back to my home planet and drop that mineral. That's its move. Uh, he's going to explore here. He's going to explore here. And I don't think I'm going to move anything else. I think I'm going to stand pat. So let's go ahead and... So I turned over another mineral. This is good, but it's also bad that I haven't found, found planets yet. So here's another prime example of what I'm talking about. I can't now move. I would love to have this colony ship in here, but I can't because I've now I'm exploring. So that, that's something you got to keep in mind. Let's turn this one over. Uh-oh, there's a black hole which isn't great. It can end up destroying my scout ship. So what happens when you enter a, a uh, system with a black hole? You roll a 10-sided die, and if you roll a 1 through a 6, your ship is fine. 7, 8, 9, or 10, your ship is immediately destroyed. So I'll go ahead and roll. I rolled a 9. Awesome. So I'm going to lose this scout ship. That's not great. So he's going to be destroyed. I'll put him over here because I can end up buying him again, which I most likely will. And then the other thing, I haven't really talked to you yet about this, but I, I will show you this really quickly. This is your handy dandy Space Empires production sheet. I can tell you at first glance, it looks a little complex, but it really is very, very simple. You're going to start on the top, proceed down, following and writing in the numbers at the end of your first economic phase, as directed. And the reason I show this to you is I wanna look at the bottom here, it says maintenance decrease losses. So I lost a scout ship. That scout ship has a hull size of one. Any ship that has a hull size of one or higher is going to cost you to maintain per the, the hull size. So a scout ship is going to cost you one CP in order to maintain each round when you get to that part of the, of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and in that column, I'm going to write negative one because I've lost that scout ship. So that's important to remember so that there you can see I wrote a negative one because I don't want to have to pay for something that I don't have. So I finished my exploration, I finished all of my moves, we are ready to go, and frankly, this was not a great start. Only one planet that is immediately able to be colonized, I found, a lot of times you'll find at least two and be able to start two colonies. Under these circumstances, I'm only going to be able to start one, which is a bummer, but that's okay. So then, we're now gonna move on at the end of this first phase. We're gonna move on to the economic phase and we're gonna calculate our colony points. Colony points can be found on, they're the value on your colonies. This is my home planet, Chulak. I'll show you here. And you can see that Chulak generates 20 CPs. If it's ever damaged, hit once by an invading ship, it's gonna be reduced to a 15. But in this game, this scenario, that's not going to happen that often. 
So Chulak is my only colony that is able to produce anything economically. So I'm going to write 20 as it produces 20. Remember, I did collect and bring back one five cost mineral. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and use that and I can throw that in my counter tray. So I'm going to write five there. We are not using the advanced rules, so we're not doing pipelines, which is the next element on the table. So I'm going to write a zero in it. And then you simply add up your numbers. So 20 plus 5 is 25. Here I will, I will show you that. I've already put zeros there for the future pipelines. You can see I have 20 colony CPs being generated and 5 mineral CPs for a total of 25. Then I'm going to move on to the maintenance phase. Once again, remember you're paying 1 CP per hull size of each of your ships. Colony ships shipyards and miners do not require maintenance of any kind. So the only two ships that I have on the board, remember I lost my other scout. I have scout number two and scout number three, which each have hull size of one. So I'm going to pay one maintenance cost for each of those or a total of two. There is no turn order bid in the solitaire scenario. So I'm gonna put zeros in that column. I'm gonna subtotal that 25 minus two is 23. So you can see, not as intimidating as it looks once somebody shows you, but you can see there, I had total of 25, minus two maintenance, turn order bid is zero, subtotal is 23. Now I'm going to proceed to technology spending and ship spending. So as I look at the board now, I've got some real, real decision points to make. You always want to invest in technology but you also want to invest in technology that's going to benefit, in my opinion, going to benefit you in immediately building and developing your economy. There's nothing worse than spending a lot of money on something that's not going to generate you any income for 10 rounds. That doesn't make any sense. So the different types of technologies that I can look at purchasing, we've got ship size. Ship size is important because you cannot build certain ships until your ship size has been increased. That is one I most likely at this point will go ahead and invest in. So I'm going to invest in ship size number two. I'm simply going to circle that in my technology space. I'm going to write ship size two and note the cost, which is 10. That leaves me with 13. So there you can see I circled ship size two. I wrote there in my technology spending ship size two, 10. Now I'm gonna decide what I'm going to do with the rest of my stuff. I have 13 CPs to use. I'm going to buy a colony ship, which counts cost eight. So that leaves me five. I have to make a decision, am I going to buy another miner? I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy a miner. I'm gonna buy a, a one miner and spend five. So what I do is I grab a colony ship and I grab my miner. I'll show them here in just a second. So a colony ship cost eight CP and a miner cost five. So you can see I bought, now you might ask, why are you buying more, Grant? Well, I know the makeup of the 25 chits in my home system, and I believe it is worthwhile to invest at this point so that I can send those out and start colonizing and developing more colonies. So once again, I ended up spending 10 on ship size two, eight on a colony ship for 18, and then five for a minor or 23. So my total CP remaining is zero, which that's normal for the first couple of turns. You don't really need additional CP as you move forward and unless you wanna do CPs to spend on upgrades as your ships are sitting there trying to get caught up to whatever technology level you're currently at. So then, that's the end of economic phase number one. I will go to the grow colony step. 
So once again, this colony is now going to grow. I'm going to take this colony one marker and on the back side it has a colony three and then I will show you this as well. Oops, I dropped it. On the back side of the colony ship, it actually has a colony five. So when it fully develops, it will develop as a five. So I'm going to put that, I always typically turn them over at this stage. And then I'm going to put the one colony right on top. So there you go. I have one colony that's going to produce one additional CP at this point for this next round. So that is actually now the end of the first economic phase. The only other element that you have to do is you write any remaining CP, you carry it forward, carry over. You can only carry four over a maximum of 30. They want you to spend that and that's it. So that was a look at once again, the introduction, the setup, some of the basic rules and mechanics of the game. And I just took you through an entire economic phase and turn to show you how that works. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a break. I will then shoot these other videos. They'll probably be 30 to 45 minute videos as well. I will try to do two to three economic phases in each one of those, explaining as I go along what is happening. So I hope you enjoyed this look at Space Empires 4X, uh, both my introduction and my first round example of play. This is a great game. I have really fallen in love with this game, particularly this solitaire variant because it's, uh, it's pretty simple. You can play it in about an hour and a half to two hours. I'll probably end up ripping through this. Well, by myself, I would rip through it probably in 90 minutes, but I'm gonna to try to give you some more, more explanation and in-depth commentary so that you get a feel for how the game plays. And then one other comment I would make, I am not an expert, so I'm always worried when I make these videos that I'm gonna have some error and someone's gonna roast me for it. That's fine, if you wanna do that and make yourself feel better, that's all right. Um, but I'm not perfect. I'm probably going to say something wrong or get a rule slightly wrong. Overall, I know the rules and I know how to play the game, so I'm not going to make major mistakes. Uh, but from time to time, I might make an error here or there. So I've been Grant with the Player's Aid. I hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you on part two. Thank you.